Last time we did spicy, I made the spiciest meal ever, and it was insane. Ugh. I feel it in my brain. Talk about a mounting burn. This is gonna come out the other end hurting. But spice isn't just about destroying people. There are real cultures that love spicy foods. Today I'm making the spiciest real traditional foods in the world. Starting at the mildest to medium to finally the hottest. Before I had other people eating it, but today I'll be eating it myself along with a helper and we'll see if we can handle the traditional spice. Oh my God. <coughs> ah! I'm gonna feel this later. So let's make this, shall we? Ah, one of the seven wonders of the world. Well, no, over here. No, 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 here. Oh look, it's my new book that's available for pre-order now. Link in the description, go get it, all right? The pre-order face is extremely helpful. Oh wait, what? Look, we are actually physically in Rome. I did travel all the way out here with fake covers to put on this book and we lost all of them. The book's really new, all right? But if you pre-order, it guarantees you a copy. The pre-order face is extremely important to the success of the book, show your support. So click the link, I love you. Now back to the video. Okay, starting off with number one, our mild but still spicy meal, jerk chicken. Coming in at around 350,000 Scoville, which is about 40 times hotter than a jalapeno. So that's mild in this scenario. First, we start with our marinade. De-stem and rough chop four chocolate habanero chilies and eight regular habanero chilies. Rough chop three green onions, one yellow onion, also rough chop. Pop all that into a blender with one teaspoon or two grams of allspice powder, one teaspoon or half a gram of ground nutmeg, one tablespoon or seven grams of Chinese five spice powder, one tablespoon or 10 grams of coarse ground black peppercorn, salt to taste, two tablespoons or 30 30 grams of vegetable oil, three cloves of garlic, one sprig worth of thyme leaves. Blend on low to loosened, then blend on high and stream in half a cup or 120 milliliters of soy sauce, and then just let that brother blend until as smooth as possible. Oh, and uh, be careful when opening your blender. Yeah, for that reason. Combine your marinade in two pounds or 900 grams of either bone-in chicken thighs, or you can do chicken leg quarters like these. Obviously, chicken leg quarters are a little bit more traditional. Just ask your butcher. They can get it cut for you. They will be large, and ideally, you want the spine attached. You see that little bit there? That's the spine. That's that good sucking meat. Take that how you will. Anyway, massage the marinade into your legs, or those legs. Wrap with plastic wrap and marinate in the fridge overnight. When it comes to cooking these, of course, you can leave them on the grill with a lid, and they'll cook just fine like that. But it takes much longer. So if you want to speed up the process, you can quite literally just vacuum seal these bad boys in vacuum bags with their marinade and sous vide them at 175 Fahrenheit for about one and a half hours, take them out, and at this point you just need some char and color on the grill. But whichever way you choose, before you do that, we need to make our spicy basting Again, the chef's favorite tool, a blender. Add five green onions, one peeled shallot, stem removed, obviously, six cloves of garlic, six chocolate habanero chilies, four green habanero chilies, and six orange habanero chilies. We got lots of colors going on here. One teaspoon or two grams of allspice powder, one tablespoon or 10 grams of black pepper, fresh ground, one teaspoon or half a gram of ground nutmeg, one teaspoon or seven grams of fine sea salt, two tablespoons or 30 grams of dark brown sugar, the zest and juice of one lime, a quarter cup or 60 milliliters of white vinegar, blend on medium speed, and then while constantly blending, stream in a quarter cup or 60 milliliters liters of soy sauce. Then again, while continuously blending, stream in two tablespoons or 20 grams of a neutral tasting oil. That could be vegetable, canola, avocado. Move to a container for basting. And at this point, get yourself an offset heat grill. That means that one side is hotter than my drawls in the Texas sun and one side is cool. If your chicken was already sous vide cooked, then all you need to do is grill it for about five minutes, flipping often, basting each time so you can get a thicker and thicker coating until nicely charred and gloriously glazed like this. Alternatively, if you did not sous vide, you'll just do this from raw and you're going to keep doing it with the lid closed until your chicken is cooked through. You know, avoid burning, obviously. Of course, this is traditionally served with many things such as fried plantains, but this is about the chicken. Now, once your chicken is cooked through to an internal temperature of 165 Fahrenheit and your skin is charred nicely, it's time for our very first challenge, which hopefully this should be easy. All right, jerk chicken. It's just the mildest of the three, although I will need a little bit of help. Cameron is coming from the New York video. He wanted to be uh, my left-hand man in this journey. Oh, look at that. That is juicy. Oh my goodness. <laughs> That is spicy, but it's delicious. This is honestly one of the best bites of chicken I've had this year. It's not that spicy. I think we're good. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. It creeps in. Yeah. It's starting to creep in. Every flavor that's in it is coming through in a very pronounced way, but you're also getting slapped in the face with spice. It's kind of like the human condition. It hurts. I want to keep eating it, but it's like, a little stab in the tongue with spice. But I will say this is tolerable and I would eat this very easily. So moving on. On to number two, medium heat, Bulldog. We're making a more OG version of the fire chicken. It's gonna be closer to 375,000 to 500,000 Scoville, okay? That's a lot of jalapenos condensed into one place. First preheat your oven to 500 Fahrenheit, then in a small mixing bowl, add rough chopped habaneros, three cloves of garlic minced, 10 Thai chilies, rough chopped, four Thai long chilies, a half inch knob of ginger grated, two green onions thinly sliced, two dried red ghost peppers. Yeah, obviously you can do fresh. We went with dried. A quarter cup or 30 grams of fine gochugaru, 
Taro, three tablespoons or 70 grams of gochujang, a quarter cup or 60 milliliters of soy sauce, two tablespoons or 23 grams of sesame oil. <sighs> Look, it's a lot of ingredients, all right? I swear the cooking process is very easy. One tablespoon or 11 grams of mirin, one tablespoon or 14 grams of honey, one teaspoon or five grams of fresh ground black pepper. <laughs> How is this really still go? Oh, here we go. Mix together using anything but a sensitive body part. Then get yourself a quarter cup or 60 milliliters of vegetable oil in a small saucepan. Get that ripping hot around 350 Fahrenheit. Pour that hot boy into a different kind of hot ingredients. Get it? Because they're spice. Sorry. It will sizzle aggressively, so maybe don't get too cocky and put your face near here. Stir that vigorously until combined, then snag one pound of boneless skinless chicken thighs and combine with your spice mixture. Now once that's thoroughly combined, place your chicken on a wire rack lined baking sheet, pop into your oven, and cook for five minutes. Then flip all your chicken, enjoy the uh, spicy air when you open that up, and cook for five more minutes under your broiler. Now get yourself a 10-inch deep cast iron skillet, set over medium heat. Using scissors, get your chicken to bite-sized random pieces. Look, it's messy, right? Just have fun. At this point, it's just gonna be a f***ing moment for you. As you're struggling to breathe in your own home due to the high Scoville oxygen in the room, pour your excess marinade into the pan, which will cause even more suffocation. Uh, probably should have told you that you're going to need your marinade. Hopefully you still have it. Sorry. Pour a quarter cup or 650 milliliters of chicken stock into your pan. Stir that till combined. Add salt to taste if needed. And then just top that with around six ounces or 170 grams of low moisture mozzarella, ideally fresh grated, and pop under your broiler on high until the cheese is melted, bubbling, and lightly browned. About four to five minutes. At that point, it's done, but feel free to garnish with sesame seeds, green onions. You know, it's not really going to do shit to protect you from the heat, but hey, it looks nice. Now we're going to find out how hot this one is. I feel like this is going to be hot. It smells good. It starts to get you pretty quick. It's like habanero right away. Wow. Oh, that's not too bad. This would be so good with a beer. Oh, it starts to get you after a couple bites. It's like comes in waves. It's like first it's like, oh, I'm okay. That's picking up. So Angela has something for us. Please, Angela, please. <laughs> What's the story behind us here? Come here. Oh my God, my heart rate. So bulldog is traditionally a drinking food. So jelly shots for everybody. I don't know how to take these. That did not help the spice at all. Oh, that's cheating. Very fragrant chili, very tropical almost. And then you get that sort of umami gochujang, salty, garlicky, rich, deep Korean flavors that you know you want. But then, then it's just regret. It's filled with regret and pain. I guess we're moving on to the next. We've made it to our final challenger. Number three, high heat fall curry. This is considered to be the hottest curry on planet Earth, coming in at a whopping 1 million plus Scoville, obviously depending on the chilies you use. Commonly, you're going to see ghost peppers used in this, though, and we're using multiple varieties. First, you need a seven to eight quart heavy bottom pot, add just enough vegetable oil to coat the bottom. In batches, you're gonna sear two pounds or 900 grams of boneless lamb shoulder cut into one inch cubes. You know, don't overcrowd the pan, okay? We want a little bit of color. I know this is gonna be spicy, but that doesn't mean that you get to have gray ass meat. Then I have to come all the way to your house and scold you. It's a lot of work. Anyway, season that lightly to taste with salt. Sear for about one to two minutes or until you get some nice browning. Sear on all sides, placing to the side as you finish and repeat with all of your lamb. Once that's done, add a touch more oil if needed, although your rendered lamb fat should have done that job for you. Reduce your heat to low, add one yellow onion rough chopped, one bunch of green onions also roughly chopped, one rough chopped red bell pepper. Oh Josh, that's nice spice, haha. <laughs> yeah, you just wait, sweetheart, right? Season lightly to taste with salt, let that sweat for about one minute, follow that with a two inch knob of ginger grated, three cloves of garlic rough chopped, and the missiles of destruction. Six whole ghost peppers rough chopped, three Carolina reaper peppers rough chopped, four Thai red chilies rough chopped, and finally a little bit of fragrance. One tablespoon or nine grams of curry powder, one tablespoon or nine grams of garam masala powder, one tablespoon or nine grams of cashmere chili powder. Cook that while constantly stirring until very fragrant, about 20 seconds, then add one tablespoon or 22 grams of tomato paste, cook for about 30 seconds, then finally add two cups or 486 grams of chicken stock to deglaze all the stuck atomically spicy bits at the bottom. Now scrape that all up nicely, then add one 14 ounce can of crushed San Marzano tomatoes, bring that to a boil over medium high and reduce your heat to low and simmer for 10 minutes. Then pop in an immersion blender and blend that bad boy until as smooth as possible. Pop your lamb back in the sauce, plus any juicy, juicy squirt, squirt. They came out of it, bring that back to a boil over medium high, reduce the low, cover with the lid and simmer for one and a half hours. That's it. But I do have to explain something important to you. As this simmers, the sauce is not only tendering up your lamb, but it's reducing. That means that it's intensifying every last drop of spice into an even more condensed and spicier nucleus of heat. Now all there's left to do is ladle this curry into a bowl, hoping that it doesn't burn a hole in it. Top it with a little bit of dainty cilantro to make it appear anything but brutally hot. And now our final taste test and see if we've got the cojones to handle the hottest spicy curry in the game. Should be easy, right? Yeah, we're still feeling the last round. We're going straight into this, so probably not good. This is me on a Friday night. The final one becomes the battle. And the battle is eat as much of it as possible without going to the milk. Fair enough. 
I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this either. Should we wait longer? No. It's wait. not going to get less spicy if we wait longer. Oh my god, Cam. Pause, pause, pause. I can't stop that train. Oh my god. Immediately. Oh, come on, man. <laughs> you know what? It's not that bad. I had the tiger. Bonsoir. Nothing. Oh my god. Happy thoughts. <laughs> oh. No. <laughs> oh. I'm fing crying right now. <coughs> ah! What do you taste? What do you taste? <sighs> Peppers. Very light lamb. <sighs> no! What? I don't even want to drink milk. Can they kind of tap out with this? Milk is gross. Oh my god. Ah! I'm gonna feel this later. Yeah, cheers, bro. Oh my god. This is not sponsored by Prime, but thank you. We made the world's spiciest foods. I'll tell you right now. Fall curry takes the cake. The best dish was easily the jerk chicken because I could keep eating it. I never want to have this again, although it was delicious. But do you know what else is delicious? <laughs> B-roll.